Hi everyone, my name is Mark Loikens from Big Mountain Studio. I am at Miami Beach and it's a beautiful day here. We're taking a short trip before we actually head on to Brazil. So behind me, you'll see Ocean Drive, which has a lot of famous restaurants and bars that you might have seen in movies too. And as you can see, everything is in the Art Deco style, which was popularized in the 1920s. So you might notice the architecture looks a little bit different. So keep watching, and I hope you enjoyed this next video. Bye. Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moikens from Big Mountain Studio. If you're interested in iOS development, then subscribe and click that bell icon so you can get notified when new videos come out. Now in our app, we can add duplicate days and we don't wanna add duplicate days because when you go on a trip, there's only one day. And when you have one day, then you can add multiple activities to that day of things you're going to be doing. So in this video, you're gonna learn more ways to work with dates and how to show alerts. You learned how to use the UI alert controller to show action sheets. Now you're gonna learn how to use them to show alerts like pop-up messages that you see here. Okay, our requirement is pretty simple to understand. We want to prevent duplicate days from being added. So let's jump into Xcode and add the appropriate validation to show an alert message. Okay, we're in Xcode and we have to think about this a little bit. When we add a new day, this is where our previous validation was. So I'm going to delete that. Now what I want to do is I want to see what date they picked, which I can get from the date picker. You learned that from the previous video. We have a UI date picker there. We're gonna get that date and we're gonna see if that date exists somewhere else in our trip. But on this screen, we don't have our array of days that we can go through and compare and see if the date already exists. So the first thing we need is for this screen to have our array of days. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna create a variable in which we can store that. And I'm just going to pass the whole trip model like that. Now, in order to set that, we have to go back to the activities view controller. And once we have our view controller here, then we can set it. So here's our trip model. Oh, you know, it doesn't show up yet. If this ever happens to you, you know, just build it and it's going to fail, but then your autocomplete should work. There it is right there, trip model. Okay. And what am I going to send it to? Well, luckily, this has a trip model right here that gets passed into it and displays all the days from this trip model. So we're just gonna pass this one. There we go. Now, okay, still shows an error, but let's build. I think it'll still build. Yeah. So now when we add days, we have a reference that we can use to access the rest of the days in our model. So when I write code and I want to use new functions that I haven't built yet, what I usually do is I just write the code in kind of like an ideal scene, like how do I want this to work or how do I want this to look? And I want it to work something like this. I want to say, if already exists, if the date already exists, then just return out of the saving. There, I want it to work something like that. Now this function doesn't exist yet, so we're going to create it. And I'm passing in a date. Okay. And, oh, you know, I, I need to return a Boolean too. Because I need to be able to say if it already exists or not. True or false. Okay, good. So what am I doing here? Now notice this time I didn't use a label. Because if I use a label, then I would just have to type it up here. So in this case, I'm just using an underscore to show that you don't need a label up here. Okay, so how do I compare if the date already exists or not? What I can do, now that I have this variable up here, I can access the day models and then see if they already contain that date. And here's how you do that. There's a handy array function that you can use. So we'll access our trip model. And we'll go into our day models. And then the array function is called contains right here. So it says it returns a Boolean value indicating whether the sequence or array contains the given element. Now, I don't have a day model to pass in to see if it exists or not. I could, if I wanted to, 
I could create a day model and I could pass that in there and see if this day model that I created equals another day model that's already in there. But that won't work because what we did in the previous video was this. This is the function that it will be using. And if it wants to see if one day model equals another day model, well, the IDs would have to be the same, not the dates. I could, I could say if the dates are equal to the same, then you know, they're equal. But we're not going to do that. We're going to leave it the way it is. Instead, we're going to use another function. Still called contains. But it's this one right here, contains where. And then in the where part, I can put in my own criteria. And that's what I'm going to do. So as you can see here, the where parameter passes in the day model. And this day model represents every day model in this day models collection or array that we have. So I'll just call that day model. Okay, hit tab and delete that part. Now, once I have that, I can do a comparison. So if this day model, and I can look at the, the date or the title, if that equals the date that I'm passing in, then it's true. You know, the, it does exist in that day models array. So if it is true, then I'm just going to return true. So again, this where statement is returning a Boolean. And it's just saying, if these two things exist, then this contains returns a true. So if the contains is true, then we're going to return true from this function. Otherwise, we're going to return false. Like that. Now, you know, there's a kind of like another shortcut that we can do here. We don't really need this else. What we can do is just do this and just say returns false. Because that way, if we're not returning true, then it's just going to come down here and it's going to return false anyway. So whether it's an else or not, it'll still return false. So we can default it to returning false unless this condition is true and then it'll return true. There's another shorthand that we can do to even shorten up this if statement because this looks kind of big and it looks kind of weird, you know, saying if all this stuff with another code block in there and return true. So let's do this. I'm going to comment this out so we can, no, I won't comment it out for now. I'll just put it down here and then I'll comment it out after. So let's rewrite this again using the shorthand. And this is just so you guys know of what's possible. You know, if you've watched the previous two videos, you're going to start getting an idea of these array functions and how you can make them or compress them so you can use less code and learn more shorthand methods. So it's the same thing, it's the contains where, except in here, what I'm going to do is put my code block right here. And if you remember from the previous video, how do you access the parameter that gets passed in? Yeah, you just use a dollar sign zero and that accesses the first parameter that's passed in. Sometimes some of these functions pass in two or three parameters and you just represent them with dollar sign zero, dollar sign one, dollar sign two, and so on. So from here, I'm going to look at the title and you notice it autocomplete works. So that's cool. And if it equals the date that I'm passing in, then it'll return true. Then if that is true, then we want to return true. There we go. So as you can see, comparing these two things right here, this one kind of looks better, right? It's a little, bit, a little more compact and maybe a little bit easier to read. You just have to get over knowing what this means, the dollar sign zero. <laughs> and one of the ways that you can do that is if you put your cursor on there and you look at this, it tells you it's a day model. So that might help you out if you just look at the help. Well, all right, let's see if this works. Okay, we have January 13th. So I'm going to add another January 13th and it should stop me, but it didn't. Why did it add it? Why did it continue to add? Well, that's because the dates, when you look at a date object, it's more than just the day, month, and year. It actually contains the time too, which includes hours, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. So by the time we added the second day model, some seconds and milliseconds had passed. So now the two dates are not equal anymore. So what we really want to do is we want to compare just the date portion of the date, right? So how do we do that? 
Well, in a previous video, we formatted the date so it didn't show the time anymore. So maybe we can use that same code. And we did that in the header where we formatted the date. We took the date right here and we formatted it to show a medium time. And this converted it to a string. So we had a string that had a very specific date format. Well, we can reuse this code for the same purpose. So if we format both dates that we get in to the same string, then they should equal each other because this format right here removes the time component. So what I wanna do is I wanna reuse the same code right here where I format a date. And what's a good way to do that? Well, when I do a comparison, it's gonna be on the date object. So what I can do is copy this code and maybe create an extension off the date object to return a medium formatted string like I do here. So I'm gonna copy that. And we have our date extension right here. We're using that to conveniently add days to the date. And let's add another function that returns a string with our format. And I think I'm just gonna call it medium date. And it returns a string. Paste the code in there. And I'm just going to return this right here, this portion. And of course this doesn't exist. So what date are we going to use? Well, we're gonna use itself. Because remember, this function will work off of any date. And that includes the date that we get from the UI date picker and all the dates that are already in our model, our day model. Okay, now that we have that, let's go back to our header and we can just use that here. So we're going to get rid of this. And once we have that title, we should just be able to say medium date. Well, I don't see it there, so let's do this. Let me comment that. Let's build it. Okay, now let's try to access that new property we just created, medium date, there we go. And again, that's gonna return a string with just the day, month, and year. So let's go back to our comparison code. And instead of comparing this date with this date, what we're going to do is compare the medium format, the medium date, with the medium date. There we go. Now notice I use a function here, and there's no specific reason why I used a function. You could actually make this a property if you wanted to. All right, so let's try it now. Okay, I'll try to add the same day and nothing happens. Okay, so this is good. Our validation is now working. It's comparing both dates and it's finding they both equal, but we need to alert the user that this validation has failed and that they need to take some kind of action to get around this. So our next step is to use an alert, to create an alert. And instead of returning, we're going to create and show an alert. So let's delete that. And the first thing I'm going to do is create my alert controller. And if you haven't seen that video already where I created alert controllers to use as an action sheet, then you should go back and watch that now because I cover all the different parts of the UI alert controller. All right, we want this one right here. And for the string, we'll just say, day already exists. And for the message, maybe something like choose another date. Okay, now here's where it's different from an action sheet. With an action sheet, we chose this first style right here called the action sheet. Now we just want an alert. Okay, now once we have that, we can add actions to it. And we need an action, like an okay button, so we can click it and it goes back to the pop-up. And this will just say okay. And the style, I'm gonna make it cancel because when they click it, it'll just, close the, you know, there's no action that's going to happen. It's just going to close the pop-up. And again, there's no handler, so I can get rid of that. Okay, now I need to add that button to the alert using the add action. Okay, and then once I have that, I need to display it. And, you know, if you look, it says UI alert controller. This is actually a view controller, so you display it just like any other view controller. Right here, you want to present a view controller. So the view controller to present is my alert. Animated, yes. And nothing will happen when they click cancel. Okay, so let's test it.
Okay, we add the first day. Then we go to add the second day, which is the same date. And what just happened here? It shows and it disappears. Well, here's what's happening, actually. If we click cancel, you'll notice it still got added. <laughs> because actually what we do need, we do need a, a return statement here. So what was happening is, even though we're showing the alert, this code down here was still continuing to get run and getting added. And this dismiss was being called, but it was dismissing the alert. That's why the alert would just flash and go away. Okay, now we have the return in there. Let's run it again. Okay, day one. We'll add the same date. There we go. Day already exists. Choose another date. Click OK. And they choose another date. And they can save it. Well, all right, guys, that's it for this video on date validation and alerts. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Consider sharing it and subscribe. And again, if you want to help out, you can provide a translation for just the title in the description of this video in your native language so people who speak your language can find this video too. All right, thanks, guys, and keep climbing that big mountain to be a great developer.